Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to learn how to knit these socks and these are around the house socks. I haven't got a name for them yet. Um, the yarn I'm using, uh, I will have a link down below for it. Um, it's um, Cheviot yarn. Uh, I got it on Dockstone Wood website. Uh, I, I got it as a uh, undyed yarn and I used avocado st stones and pips to dye it. So as you can see, it's like a dusty pink color that it turned out. I think the, the, the yarn um, is, it makes a big difference in how much color it, absor it, it uh, absorbs. Um, because I recently dyed my um, Favo sweater yarn with avocado and it didn't take as much yarn and that's merino. This one is a, a, a rougher yarn. Uh, a, I mean it's not, it's still soft and I can feel it here. It's softer than the top because I've been wearing them and as you can see uh, I don't think they're that strong. It's, it's that strong of a wool. It doesn't have any nylon in it, nothing to give it a little bit of a body. But as slipper socks, on top of other socks, uh, just sitting on the couch, uh, they're fine, they're good. Um, so if you wanna, if, if you wanna use this yarn, I will have a link of the yarn down below. You can order like a natural color and usually um, it arrives quite fast. I don't know how it goes now with everything that's going on in the world. But I, um, I got mine really, really fast um, along with some uh, shampoo little bars. They have a beautiful website. Um, they, they're from the Lake District. Um, so I've done an unboxing. I will link that video down below if you want to see the yarn the way it looked when I bought it. And this is the way it looks after I dyed it with avocado. It looks a lot more paler in... Um, on the camera, it looks more like light brown, but I, I promise you, it's it's a pink. It's a it's pink. <laughs> I don't know why it shows like this in the in the camera, but it's pink. It's not it's not brown. I'm trying to find anything that. Oh well, I can't see anything that would be brown for you to compare it to. Let me just have a look through here. I've got here a natural color. Yeah, that, that this this makes it pink, yeah. So this is an undyed yarn and this is avocado so you can see it's pink. It's not beige, it's pink. All right. So uh you could use this yarn if you want. However, like I said, I don't think it's strong enough to be uh like hard wearing. So um I chose the Drops Lima as an alternative, or you could use uh, Rowan, oh, what is it called? Superwash something. Um, I will have a link down below for that as well. Lima is, is good. It's a combination of wool and alpaca. Also, you could use any worsted weight uh, yarn. If it has some nylon in it, I think it will have a bit more strength. But I quite like... I like this kind of yarns that, you know, you could just um, <laughs> do the spit method to like, um, you know, connect two ends or something like that. So anyway, let me tell you about the construction of this sock. So this is cuffed down. You start with um, your ribbing here. And for, I, I think... I thought that uh, one by one rib would look nice on it. Uh, obviously, you could do two by two rib if you want. Um, I suggest one by one rib. So you do that for a little bit, then you work plain stockinette for a couple of rows, and then we're gonna do three rounds of this beautiful uh, sided um, braid. So it looks more like. The knit, the, the stitches are going that way, but actually you're knitting them as you go, so they go horizontal. And um, what I did uh, for the back, as you can see, uh, I started here 
I started here and I went around once, twice, and the third time I, I stopped it here and I continued after, obviously when you finish the sock and I'll show you everything in this video, with a uh, chain, like a crochet chain, and then at the end I put some tassels. So when you wear them, you just bring them to the front and tie them up and I think they just, it just gives them a, a like something special so then you wear them like this and then you have this in front and they make they, it, it just makes them look so pretty so after that uh, after you've done the side braid you come to you you need a couple more rounds and then you come to the um, heel flap and I've done the heel flap here in the eye of partridge and I did measure this before uh, for years I thought Eye of Partridge was a different one which I still believe it's stronger than this uh, but this is the real Eye of Partridge so it kind of shows it as like diamonds, diamonds um, on the heel flap and then you turn the heel pick up stitches on the gusset then you do your decrease gusset stitches work the foot and then it's it's got a rounded toe with decreases on both sides and we use we use the kitchener stitch to close in um, the the toe so the toe from above it looks like this and then from the side is like a rounded rounded toe so yeah i designed these socks to be knitted on my all-time favorite needles and these are the eddy and they're the long version i have a video all about the long version and the short version and all that so um, these are not cheap but they are so so good and i love knitting using the um, magic loop method but this just this is even better than that and i find them very comfortable the long the the long version I have something to hold on to they've got um, different tips so there's a pointy pointy tip and there's a more like a rounded tip so they're very um, easy to use so let's put this on the side <clears throat> you also need a crochet hook uh, but obviously if you don't have one you don't have to do the whole chain and all that even though it looks pretty and this is the yarn so um, for a pair of socks you would need two well almost two I'd say um, I used uh, maybe about 80 grams for these ones so I still have some left of this some yarn left of this obviously if you want to make the cuff longer you can make the cuff longer and then you would use a uh, hundred grams but um, just have two at hand and this is very inexpensive yarn very soft comfortable uh, I use this for a lot a lot of other projects so the first thing that we're going to do take off the label and we're going to do our cast on and I usually cast on on two needles I like it that these needles have the the size can you see it says four millimeter yeah that's another thing I forgot to mention so worsted weight four four millimeter yarn uh, needles worsted weight yarn four millimeter needles you leave a little bit of a tail well quite a long tail because we're going to do the long tail cast on all right get that out of the way so I have the tail on my right hand, the working yarn on the light left side. I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to go in underneath with my finger, twist with my thumb and grab the tail and pull it through. And that's how I do my slip knot. And then with two needles, I'm going to put them through the slip knot, which will be my first stitch. And then because I'm a combination knitter I always wrap the round around my finger uh, yarn around my finger like this and then I'm going to go 
under with my thumb like that and I'm going to go under with my needles, grab the working yarn and pull through. That's one stitch. So under here with the needles, grab the working yarn and pull through. Under, grab the working yarn and pull through. Under, grab the working yarn and pull through. We do it one more time. So you hold the tail with your fingers down here. You go under with the thumb, then under with the needles, grab your yarn and pull through. So you want to cast on 40 stitches, two, four, six, Forty stitches. So I've got my forty stitches here now. So I'm going to count twenty. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Make sure I've got twenty on here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then I take one of the needles. I hold the, my. Um, I hold my stitches like this. I bring one of the needle out. Well, not completely out. Just, oops. Here we go. Out this way like that. And then I pull it back up. And then this needle, I pull it from here, this way. Oops, oopsie. I just pull it this way. That, like that. Can you see? Oh, good. And then I fold it in half. I fold my work in half. Let's cut some of this tail. I left it too long. <clears throat> and I get ready to work one by one rib. So I have my working yarn, it's on this needle coming from the back and this is the needle I'm going to take the stitches from. I grab my third needle, wrap my yarn around, so my yarn is coming from the back needle and I go in the first stitch and I do a knit, then yarn forward to purl. Yarn back to knit, yarn forward to purl, knit, purl, Oops. knit, purl, Oops. purl, so just make sure that your, your stitches don't get twisted. Knit, purl. Okay, let's move this tea, it's driving me a bit crazy. Knit, purl. All right, so that's the first needle. You, you twist, turn um, on the other needle and as you can see you want to have these um, stitches that means that you're on the front you don't want to have it backwards with the pearl bumps because that's not good so we're going to do knit pearl knit pearl all the way to the end knit pearl knit pearl so you work this ribbing, one by one ribbing, for about two centimeters, and then we were we will work two, three rows of just plain stockinette. I just want to get to the end to show you how we're going to pull on 
um, that yarn so we kind of blend in the first row because as you can see you'll still have this this yarn here this yarn space but on the next row when you start working your second row you go through the front drop that stitch and really pull on it so then there's no more gap there bring the yarn forward to do your pearl stitch yarn back knit forward pearl back knit here we go so the ribbing starts to form so I'm going to do two centimeters of ribbing then a little bit of stockinette and after that I'm going to come back and show you how to work the sideways braid and um, we'll continue from there after all right so a few minutes later after having a <laughs> sips of my tea and eating my um, nature valleys bar I uh, managed to knit the two centimeters of the ribbing and uh, three rows of plain stockinette and now we're ready to do the side braid this one here so you need to make sure that you're at the beginning of your round so you have your um, this is where we start it and the way we're going to do it is like this so the first stitch you're going to go in and knit one but you're not going to take it off the needle but you're going to twist and put it on so you, we kind of made one so as you can see we made from one stitch we made two stitches let me show you that again all right so the first stitch you're going to go in this way grab your yarn pull it through like that you're not going to take the stitch off but you're going to twist and with your left needle you're going to put it on so that's um, that's our you only have to do this at the beginning of this round and now you're going to go not in the first stitch let me just uh, not in the first stitch but the second stitch through the back loop and knit one obviously you can't take it off because it's oh hang on so second stitch oh, second stitch through the back loop to knit one then you bring um, you bring your needle to the front and go in the first stitch this first stitch to the front and knit another one and then you take take both of them off so it will look like this and now what you want to do is go with your left needle and move that stitch over there and from now on you keep repeating this so you go in the second stitch through the back loop to knit one through the in the first stitch to knit one take them off that's it then we're going to move this stitch back so it's a little bit fiddly but it's worth it so we go through the second stitch second stitch through the back loop to knit one first stitch through the front loop to knit one and take it off and then you move that stitch the first the last stitch you just move it back to your left needle and as you can see you can already see the braid coming through so let's just do a few more bring it back and what you want to do is try to pull on your yarn to kind of make it tight because otherwise these stitches then tend to be a bit loose so through the back loop knit one through the front loop knit the first one pull it through and then pull on yank on that yarn to tighten it and as you can see the braid starts to form so I'm going to continue doing this 
and um, I'll show you when we're ready to bind off that stitch that we increased at the beginning and start the, the next section which is the next little section of stockinette. So I've done two rounds of um, the side braid. Now I'm not going to wait and do another one because I really want to get this filming before it gets dark but um, I'm just about to finish the last one so I'm going to go through the back of the second stitch and then through the front of the first stitch bring it out and then I'm going to take that stitch and move it over on the other side and then what you want to do is just knit it together so we're going to put it on here and we're just going to knit it through the back loop with the first stitch that we have there and that's all you do and that's the end of our spiral side braid and then what you want to do is continue knitting in stockinette for um, three four rows or longer if you want and then we're going to start doing the heel flap so this is what it looks like as you can see and if you look here it started here this is where our, our um, side um, braid started and this is where he finished and from here we're going to pick the uh, chain and we're going to do a crochet chain from here and from there but I'll show you that when we get to it all right, let's get on, make a little bit of a tidiness here, and let's get on with the next step. Now there's a, a small step that you need to do, which is uh, rearranging the stitches. So because we started, so this is the beginning of the round, and we want this to be the back of our sock, as you can see, we need to rearrange the stitches, and it's not complicated at all. All you need to do is take 10 stitches of the first needle, spread them on here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we're going to combine these two needles together, so just swap them around, Oops. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and then just blend these two together. So what we're gonna do, because this is the beginning of the round, we're just gonna knit all the way to the end. So that way we'll have uh, the stitches rearranged. So knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So as you can see now we have, um, this is the, the front of the sock, this is the back of the sock, this was the beginning of our round, we swapped the, uh, we turned around the stitches and then we've knitted this back needle here and we're ready to start the flap. So you always want to start the flap on this side that has uh, the beginning of your round and also the, uh, the beginning of your side braid and the end of your side braid. And the uh, heel flap, I'm sorry, this is so distracting, this music. Um, People are so selfish. Anyway, uh, we're going to work it on 20 stitches. So you need a row counter or you can just make tallies on paper. So you want to put your row counter on zero and then we're going to work it um, the eye of partridge, which is like this. I'm going to slip the first stitch, then slip a second stitch, then I'm going to knit one. All right. Then slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, 
Snip one, knit one, slip 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 one, knit one, and then knit the last stitch. So that's the first uh, row. Then you're not going to work in a spiral anymore. You're going to turn your work and you're going to purl across all these stitches, slipping the first stitch. So with the yarn in the front, I'm going to slip the first stitch and then I'm going to purl the rest. That's it. And I'll show you this. Um, it's this half partridge is worked on a multi oh, on um, <laughs> on a four row repeat. Pearl all the way to the end. All right. Then I'm going to turn my work. And because on the first, sorry, I forgot to um, click my row counter. Because on the first right side row, I've done slip the first stitch, then slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. On the third one, on the third row or the second right side row, I'm going to slip the first stitch and then I'm going to knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. Knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, all the way to the end. And then slip, slip one and knit the last stitch. And as you can see, it starts to make this like diamondy shape um, on the back of the heel, which is nice. So slip. Oh, wrong. Slip the first stitch and knit all the way to the end. Sorry, I forgot to do that. Was row number three. And then you repeat these until you've got 20 stitches, 20 rows. <clears throat> we are working on 20 stitches, by the way. All right, so as you can see, it already starts to show the like little um, diamonds um, shapes or like texture. So continue that until you get to row 20 and I'll uh, see you when we get there. So I'm just about to um, pearl on row 20. So, um, then we can turn the heel together. So pearl across. Oops. I do pearl differently than most people. I'm a combination knitter. Um, so yeah, just bear in mind. Do pearl the way you pearl and everything <laughs> will be the same. So just pearl across all stitches for row 20. And then we're going to start turning the heel. And this is how we're going to turn the heel. We're going to knit across all stitches to get to the wrong side. So I'm going to slip one actually, slip one and knit all the way to the end. And the turning of the heel starts on the wrong side. And it's very simple. So, turn your work, uh, slip the first stitch, and <clears throat> then we're going to purl 11. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11. Then we're going to purl two together. So just go through both stitches and purl two together. Purl another one. And then we're not going to finish the rest of the stitches. We're just going to turn our work. I'm going to slip the first stitch. Then I'm going to knit five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to knit two together, knit another one, and turn my work. Slip the first stitch, purl until one stitch before the gap, and you'll you'll see where that is. Um, so here we've got the gap. So we're going to purl those two together to close that gap. Pull another one and then turn, slip one stitch, knit until that gap that we um, saw before, here's the gap, I'm going to knit two together, knit another one, turn my work. Slip one, pull all the way to that gap. Here we are, pull two together, pull one, turn your work. We'll end up with 12 stitches, so slip one, knit to the gap. Here it is. Oh, knit two together, knit one, turn your work, slip the first stitch, pull all the way to the gap. Which is here, so the last two stitches, just pull them together. Turn your work and now we're going to knit across and count in the same time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we've got the gap, so I'm going to knit those two together, which makes it 12. So I've got 12 stitches. And as you can see, we turned the heel. Can you see? Our work turned this way. And now what we're going to do with this needle here, we are going to pick up 11 stitches on in these Vs. And you see here, because we slipped each, each row, we have a series of V going that way. Can you see them? So we're going to go through both legs of each V and, and pick up 11 stitches. So we're going to go in the first V, which is this one here. I'm going to pick one, go in the next V, that's two, next V, that's three, next V, that's four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, and the last one, eleven. So now we picked up eleven stitches here. I'm going to leave that needle here, and with a new needle, we're going to just knit across these stitches, which are twenty. So just knit across. Sorry, I have to stand up when I'm filming 
sometimes because I need to see if you guys are seeing what I'm showing. And I look out the window and I still see a lot of people walking. Unbelievable. Stay home. Stay home. All right. So we've knitted across those. And now with our fresh new needle here, empty needle, we are going to pick 11 stitches on the other side. So we're going to go in the first. Can you see the V's? The V's are going that way. Here they are, look. That's a V. That's a V. That's a V. We're going to go in the first V. And we're going to pick 11 stitches. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There we go. And now we're going to continue knitting these stitches all on this needle. So just knit across all those stitches until you get to three stitches on your left needle. And I'll show you, we're going to start the decreases for the gusset. And you do the decreases for the gusset every other round. So one round you've done, you do decreases, the next round you just do plain knit stitches. I've got some beautiful star lights here, but they're kind of losing their, their, uh, <laughs> they're losing their uh, battery. Hang on, let's see. So we've got three stitches left now. So I'm going to knit, go to the second stitch here and I'm going to knit two together and then I want to knit one. So as you can see now, we've got all our gusset stitches on one needle and all our top of the foot stitches on one needle and we're going to do decrease here at the end and decrease here at the beginning. So we've done this decrease here. Now we're going to knit across the top of the foot, which is just plain knitting. And now we start the decrease on, decreases on this other side of our um, gusset. So I'm going to knit one, pull it through, then I'm going to slip one as if to knit, slip a second one as if to knit, pull my left needle through both of them and knit them through the back loop. So we've done a decrease. Now we're going to do one round of just plain knitting and then the next round will be decreases again. And everything will be explained in the pattern. Just want to get here. <coughs> to the other side. Oh, sorry. Out of focus. So once you've done a few rounds of decreases, the gusset will start to shape. There we go. So remember, you, you do 
an increase uh, a decrease here so you knit until you've got three stitches left then you knit two together knit one continue knitting the stitches on the top of the foot get to the other side knit one SSK on the next two that's another decrease and then you do that every other every other round and then you stop doing decreases when you have 20 stitches on this needle and when you have 20 stitches on this needle you work you, that means you you got to this side this part here and then you continue to knit the foot so for me I'm a size 36 so I've got quite small feet I knitted about eight centimeters obviously you try it on and you see you know how much you need to knit it so you do all that and I'll continue doing the gusset, gusset decreases in the foot and then I'll see you when we're ready to decrease for the toe and do the kitchener stitch at the, at the toe. Through the magic of editing, I finished the foot of the sock and now we are going to start the decreases for the toe and they're very simple. So um, all you gotta do is knit one, slip slip knit so slip one as if to knit slip a second one as if to knit put your left needle through and knit through the back loop then we're going to knit until we've got three stitches left here we go We've got three stitches left. I'm going to go in the second stitch and knit two together. Oops. There we go. And then knit the last stitch. So that's one side. We're going to go to the next side and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to knit the first stitch. Then I'm going to slip one. As if to knit, slip a second one as if to knit, put my left needle through both of them and knit through the back loop. Then I'm going to knit until I've got three stitches left. Okay. Got three stitches left. I'm going to go in the second stitch and I'm going to knit it and then knit the last stitch. So that's the decrease row for the next row. I'm just going to do a plain knit round. Um, sorry, I keep saying rows. A plain knit round, then another uh, round with decreases, then another round without decreases until I have 10 stitches on this needle and 10 stitches on the other and then we're ready to do the kitchener stitch and closing the toe. We're getting there, we're getting there. Now we're going to do the kitchener stitch for the toe of our sock. So what you want to do is cut your yarn. So leave quite a long tail and cut it. There we go. And then you want to thread a tapestry needle like this. Okay. And you know, you want to align your needles. Now remember you've got 10 stitches left on each needle. You want to align them like this. And you want to go in the first, um, in the front needle, in the first stitch as if to knit and thread your yarn through it and then take it off. Then you, you go in the next stitch as if to purl and you keep it on there. Then you go to the back needle as if to purl and then you take it off. In the second stitch as if to knit and you leave it on. So we Continue repeating this, so as if to knit, 
off as if to purl on back needle as if to purl off as if to knit keep it on and as you can see we're already closing the top the toe so knit off purl purl off knit go again knit off purl purl off knit and there it is you can see you can't you can't even see where you went from that side to this side have a look here there it is you can't see where you seamed it it kind of just like blends into each other and now i'm going to show you how to do the the cable and the little tassels which is, are very very simple now for the cable you need a crochet hook and your yarn so what you want to do is go through the beginning and as you can see this is where this is the the V where I start the first V of my um, horizontal braid and I'm just going to attach the yarn and pull it through there it is I'm going to leave that tail there I'm going to weave it in later and now I'm just going to chain so just chain one two three four so you do a chain quite a long chain I mean depending how how long you want but just make sure that it reaches to the front of your sock. There we go. Just a bit longer. Just a simple crochet chain. And then you check whether it can come all the way to the front and you would want to tie it up if you want a bow then make it longer if you don't want a bow then just cut your yarn and pull it through so we attached we attach the cable and it will go this way actually it will go this way to the front of your of your um, sock like that and at the end of this we're going to attach the little tassel and the tassel it's very simple as well um, the way I did it I just used three fingers and I'm gonna wrap the yarn on three fingers like this I don't know how much yarn you want. Obviously, you would do it on your other on your other hand, so you can cut with this with one of them. Cut your yarn, and then you're gonna bring you're gonna bring bring it through the back under in the middle to kind of like tie it up here at the top. There we go. So this one, you're going to do it the other way. So we're just going to tie it up here. Like this. And then you want to go through it one more time. And tie it again at the top. 
just tie it really tight. This is going to be a quite a small tassel. And now what you want to do is cut the bottom here. So this is a curly tassel because I forgot this is the this is a um, a skein that I um, unraveled. So it's quite a curly one. And uh, you just want to squeeze it tight. And then you get another piece. Put it underneath and tie it up here. Just tie it a bit there. There we go. Just squeeze it really tight so it doesn't come undone. There we go. And then you cut those two the same length of your tassel. There we go. And then this, this one, you use it to tie your knot here with it. Oops. Nope. Didn't want to do it. Okay, bring it through. And then try to tie your knot as close as possible to your chain. Like that. And then what I like to do is go through here with my crochet chain and bring those yarn those yarns through just to kind of secure them and then go through inside your tassel. I'm sorry. It's really hard to, to, to do this. There we go. And then grab those yarns and pull them through, down through your tassel. There we go. And once you brought them through, like that, you just cut them the same size as your tassel. And obviously you wouldn't have such a curly tassel as me. You could also do pom-poms instead of tassels. You could do pom-poms if you want, but um, I like, I think the tassels look nicer. So yeah, those are the socks, the slipper socks, and I hope that you enjoyed them. Um, I will leave links to the PDF pattern down in the description, and um, yeah, I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.